Welcome to The Simple Truth. I'm John Furns, your Bible teacher. I want to take a few moments here before we get started in chapter 4, verse 6 in 1 Timothy on the, on the lesson that we've been teaching the last few weeks of, of you know, God's wisdom for a pastor. And uh, having been a pastor, I, I got a little insight there. But a couple of weeks ago, a, a friend of mine that I hadn't seen for a while, we were, we were at a uh, reception and, and she said the sign behind you you always got your head in the way and I can't read it so um, I'm going to move over a little bit here and be able to read it for you the will of God will not take you where the grace of God will not protect you uh, and uh, I want you to know it's always encouraging when when uh, someone you know takes the time to say seen you on TV you know, liked your program, whatever, you know, whatever it is that they want to say. And, and it's always grateful for that to happen. So if you happen to see me uh, in Quincy or at a restaurant or somewhere around here somewhere, and you see this program and you want to say hello to me and say, you know, I've seen you on TV, that's wonderful. I, I, that's encouraging to me, you know. And uh, I just want you to know that I, I am grateful for those who are watching the program. Uh, I pray that you're learning because that's the intent of what I do is to teach you the Word of God. I'm not a, a, a denominational person. Uh, I don't care who you are or what the church you go to. If you want to know the Word of God, I'm going to take the time to try to, try to teach it to you, okay? Uh, as simply as I possibly can. It has to be the simple truth because God has the truth that we need. And I have to do it simply because I'm not the... The, the theologian person that, that, you know, has got all that degrees behind him. I'm just simply a believer who loves the Lord, who studies his word, and, and God has been able to use me to teach his word in a simple way that people can understand. And I enjoy doing that, and I enjoy seeing the looks on people's faces when they finally get what God is saying to them. You know, we... Not only do we need to know the Word, but we need to experience God in the process. Whether it's, it's an a experience of, of being answered prayer, or whether it's being an experience of saying, Oh, wow, that's, that's, God had to do that, otherwise it couldn't have possibly happened. You know? um, I've had many experiences like that, and, and that's when you know you have the you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have Christ working in your life. You know that God loves you from those little things that happens that says, I'm at the right place. I can remember when I was working, so many times I would get to a place and they would tell me, oh, you're here just in time. Um, I'm glad you came now because I'm going to be gone in 30 minutes. I've got to leave then and, and I could do what needed to be done and get it over and, and, and help them. And you know that's just one of those divine appointments. Uh, there's been times when, when I got there just in time and, and someone needed prayer. Um, having back trouble or 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 something else that's going on um, need to be have the comfort of knowing that, that God loves them. Uh, so many times those things happen and I just look back and I think, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be a part. You know, uh, teaching his word, uh, whether it's praying for someone or whether it's, it's comforting someone um, with with words. Um, that is when you know that you are experiencing God in your life. And I want everyone, not only to know his word, but to experience him. And, and I just love you all that, that's listening to this. And you take time to say, I've been watching you on the program. Uh, keep it up. And, and, and I, don't be afraid to say something to me. Don't be afraid to stop me and say, I see you on TV. Um, I don't remember where I was, but I was walking somewhere. I, it was in a, in a grocery store, matter of fact. And I walked, I walked toward this lady, and this lady said, I see you on TV, you're doing a good job, and, 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 and then kept on going. I mean, that was, that was the whole conversation. And I am so pleased 
when that happens because it encourages me. And I want you to know that pastors, teachers, they need to be encouraged too. So uh, now, let's get, now let's get back into the study, okay? Uh, Paul's writing to this young man, Timothy. He, uh, he calls him his son. He's not uh, a um, biological son. But Paul is taking him kind of under his wings and, and, and helping this young preacher to get started and, and showing him and telling him the things that needs, needs to be brought out in his message to the church and, and the encouragement and, and how to set the church up. So with the elders and deacons and, and the qualifications for them, we went through that in chapter 3. Here we are in chapter 4. Um, the Holy Spirit is saying in the latter times and, and that's sometime between the time Jesus came the first time and Jesus returns is the latter times uh, that some will be um, departed from the faith. In other words, their faith is growing cold. They, uh, they no longer have the zeal for the Lord. Um, uh, they've cooled off, you might say. And, and some of that is because of false doctrine that they've been taught. Uh, some of it's been hurt uh, that happens to us. I, I want you to understand that uh, as a Christian, as a pastor, as a teacher, uh, I've been hurt many times by people in the church. And there's some who say, well, why do you keep going? Well, it's people in the church that maybe have hurt me, but God has it. And I want you to know, if you've been hurt by someone in the church, it wasn't God that hurt you. He still loves you. He still cares for you. He still has his word for you. He's still working in your lives. And I want you to understand, I keep going, not because I've been hurt and want to quit. It's because Jesus didn't. He was talked against. He was uh, beaten and finally died for you and I, but he didn't quit. And I encourage you today, don't be a quitter. Follow through. Continue on. Just because things get tough, just because you've been hurt, don't ever stop. Don't ever back up. Keep following after Christ and loving on Him because He loves you and, and He'll take you through anything that you're going through. I, I've said it before and I, I believe it and that is, you know, we all want to be delivered from our troubles immediately. Most of the time, we're delivered through those things because there's a lesson that we can learn and an encouragement that we can so that we can help someone else. All right, verse six. Uh, uh, in these, if uh, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed in the word of faith and a good doctrine which you have carefully followed. So here. Paul's saying, these things I've been telling you, they are good. Be nourished in the Word. Keep studying the Word. Keep reading the Word. Um, keep having faith in God. Keep going forward. Keep in that good doctrine that, that is of Christ. That's the things that we need to be doing. Here the, comes the warning, verse 7. But reject profane and old wives' tales... And exercise yourself towards godliness. I want you to understand that there are some subjects that come up. Some things that brought up has nothing to do with the gospel. And some of the things that, that we are, uh, you know, they've been, they've been times that churches have had real problems because, well, the color of the carpet. A few years ago, there was a split in a church because some of them thought that Jonah was swallowed by a whale and some of them thought he was swallowed by a big fish. What has that got to do with my faith in Christ? Okay? 
If God wanted Jonah swallowed by a guppy, he could have done it. He prepared for that. But we get into these little trivial things that don't have anything to do with our faith in Christ that we, we should stay away from. And yet, we allow those things to tear us apart as a family, as a church. Uh, verse 8. But bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is proper for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance. Now, Paul's not saying don't exercise. Paul is saying here, of the two things here, bodily exercise or Spiritual exercising, spiritual exercising is the more important one. He's not saying do not exercise. Because we're not only to exercise this body to keep it strong, we are to exercise our faith for it to grow and to be strong. But of the two, our exercising of our faith is the more important one. Not neglecting physically, but putting the emphasis on spiritually. Because it is the spiritual side of us that's going to get us into heaven who follow after Christ. Not being physically strong. This body, no matter how much you exercise, is someday going to give up. But your spirit and your soul one day will still continue in eternity, and that's what he's saying. Exercise your faith in Christ the more. But you don't have to give up on, on not doing exercises, too. So, so the importance there, which comes first, okay? Um, verse 10, For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. So here he's, he's, he's come back and he says, you know, to this end, exercising your faith. You know, you're going to labor, but you're also going to suffer reproach. There's always going to be someone who comes against you. Not because of you, but because of your belief in Jesus Christ. He told us in the Gospels, if they hated me, they'll hate you. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you for his namesake. And Paul tells us to have joy um, in, in these times of, of trial. You know, as I was talking about being hurt by people in the church, you know, we go through those things. We suffer those things. Um, there's sometimes when, when, when I hear of a couple that, that I've had the privilege to... Uh, um, be the minister to get them married, to do the service, um, and then find out years later that they divorce. There's a part of me that suffers because because that's not what I wanted to do, and that's not what I believe God wanted us to, to do. He wanted us to work through these things and not against them. You know, I've told you I've been hurt by people in the church, and still I go on. That's part of the suffering that 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 we go through. Um, and, and we shouldn't have to do that, but it's part of our growing up. You know, growing pains hurt. You know, uh, in physically or, or spiritually, growing pains hurt at times. But understand, you're never alone. Christ is with you always. He gives us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us so that we can be overcomers, that we can can be victorious, that we can grow mature in the word and in our faith, be an example to those around us. God's invisible in the sense that we cannot see him. So they see us. And if we're following after Christ and if we're living for him and letting Christ live through us, they're seeing Jesus. And that's the most important thing that we could ever do is to preach Christ through our lives. Okay, let's go on. Um, these things uh, command and teach. 
Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, and in faith, in purity. Until I come, <clears throat> give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that, that is in you, which was given to you by, the, by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the elders. <clears throat> okay, we go back to verse 12. He's saying, okay, Timothy, you're young. You know, you've, you've got uh, the qualifications to be a preaching elder or a pastor, as, as, uh, however you want to. Uh, but continue in this. Don't let anyone say, oh, you're, you're not old enough to be doing this. Don't let someone despise you because of your age. But be an example to the believers of the maturity that you have in the word and the maturity that you have in your walk. Uh, and do it in the spirit, do it in love, and do it in faith and purity. Doing things righteously or right doing. Uh, he says, in verse thing, continue with these, uh, give attention to reading, exhortation, and doctrine of the Word of God, of Christ in you. Then he comes back and he says, don't neglect the gift that was given to you by the laying of hands of of the, of the elders and by prophecy here. Now, we do not know what that gift was. The Word did not tell us. But understand that when we are giving a gift, we're not to neglect it. And the idea here is, is that we continue to think about how that gift is used in us, whether it be the gift of preaching or, or, or any of the other gifts that, that is in, a, in the Word that we can use, whether it be of the Holy Spirit or whether it be a, one of the, the uh, um, office positions that, that Christ gives us or any of the other giftings of helps and ministration and mercy and giving and, and those things. Um, all of those are gifts. And when they prayed for this young man and they laid hands on him, by prophecy he was given the knowledge of a gift, whatever that gift was. So that now he's saying, not only continue in the word, not only continue in your conduct of following after Christ and your faith growing, your experience growing, but keep in mind that gift that was given to you through the laying of hands and prophecy. Don't just forget it. You know, uh, today I can tell some people that, that uh, we pray for them and, and a word has come to them uh, through whoever uh, by laying hands on them and, and, and praying for them. Write it down so you can look at it. Uh, my wife and I went to Texas to a church and we was prophesied over in that church and we have a CD of what was said to us. And I stick that in our CD player every now and then and, and, and listen to what was said and be reminded of the prophecy that was given to us. Uh, verse 15, meditate on these things. Think about these things. You know, you don't have to, have to do only meditate on them. But keep them in mind. Don't let them fall away from you and be forgotten. Always remember those things that God has said to you about you. Okay? Uh, meditate on these things. Give yourself um, entirely to them that your progress may be effective to all. Uh, or evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them for uh, in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So he says meditate on these things that's been given to you. Not only on the word but on the words that God has given you about you that you have this particular gift. Whatever that gift may be. 
you know, progress in them so that everyone around you understands that you have this working in your life. Uh, he said, it says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. In this Christian walk that we're walking, the first person that you need to keep strong and, and, and uh, going forward in your spiritual walk is you. Okay? If I don't stay in the Word, then I, I get in trouble. OK, if if I don't continue uh, my faith growing, uh, I can get in trouble. Uh, I could be deceived. Uh, I know that that that's possible. Uh, I don't want it to happen, but I need to be aware that it can happen. Uh, it says to continue them, continue, continue, continue. We never stop learning about. Christ. You know, I don't care how much you know about the word. There's always more. Because God's always got more for you. God's wisdom for us is always more. He has that wisdom for us as, as, as pastors uh, to continue in them. But he says, continue in them for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. You will be that example. Not only will you stay in Christ who saves you. And you're doing your part of being saved by continuing in him. But those around you will see that you're not only teaching this, you believe it and it's in your life. You're walking in this. The old saying, if you're going to talk to talk, walk the walk. It saves other people who looks at you as an example of Christ living here on earth. And they can be saved too. So you are a, a, an example for other people. Be a good one. Okay? Be a great one. Chapter 5. Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father and the younger as a brother. So here's our conduct to other church members. The older ones. We look at them and we don't... Um, don't rebuke them. And yet sometimes we need to lovingly correct them at any age. But we do it with respect. This is about respect we're talking about here. Exhort him as a father. In other words, you may have to correct in a way, but always as if it was your father that you was correcting. Not in, in hatred or malice or I'm smarter than you, but as together in, in a kind, loving way, always giving the respect deserved to an elder. Um, the younger man is a brother. Treat him like a brother. Uh, verse 2, older women as mothers, younger women as sister with all purity. So here, again, you know, the older women, treat him with respect of being a mother or at least old enough to be your mother uh, but always respect and the younger women as a sister with purity in other words doing it in a loving way but not in a um, uh, carnal way I guess is what I'm thinking you know always with respect both of these, we're talking about having respect, okay? Um, honor widows who have, uh, who are really widows. But if any widow has um, children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable before the Lord. So here he's saying, if you are a widow... And you have children or grandchildren that are living. They should be taking care of you now in your old age because you took care of them in their young age. So it's always family taking care of family. Uh, now, 
she who is really a widow and left alone, trust in God and continue in supplication and prayer and night daily. But she who lives uh, in pleasure is dead while she lives. So here it says, if she has no family, the church is to ta take care of her, to provide for her. Uh, but she needs to be doing her part also of, of supplying prayer and continue in the faith. Uh, and not walking away from it. Uh, and these things command that they may be blameless. So here we have commandments about how to take care of family. And those that don't have family. Of how the church is to be in that. Uh, always uh, to continue in those things. So that there be no blame brought against the church or themselves. Uh, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of the house of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So here again, talking about taking care of your family. And if you don't, you're worse than an unbeliever. In other words, you're not following God's laws. You're not part of it. Um, do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number, and not unless she has been the wife of one man. Uh, well report for good works if she has brought up children if she has lodged strangers if she has washed the feet of the saints if she has received uh, the affliction uh, she, if she has diligently followed every good work so here talking about the widow that is older you know have they been you know are they at least are they under the age of 60, um, which is a great age at that time? Uh, uh, the, the wife of one man, uh, are they good works that she's done? Has she been part of, the, of, of washing the feet of the saints? Uh, is she, in other words, doing the work of the church and doing those things diligently, every good work? She is then eligible to be taken care of by the church as long as she doesn't have family to take care of those things for them. As we, uh, we're not far done with this section, and, and I'm sorry, but I'm running out of time. So um, when we start into this the next time, I want you to understand these are things that Paul is telling to a young pastor. It's God's wisdom for a young pastor, and that he is continuing to increase his knowledge of the places that he needs to go. Pastors need to be taught also of the things that they need to do and to work. God bless you.